Today I'm going to share some lessons that we've learned about telling your spouse that you want a divorce. And at the end of the video I'm giving away a free hour with my favorite divorce coach who can help you prepare and plan for that talk and guide you through it. So stay tuned to the end for details about how you can get that free hour. So you're preparing to tell your spouse that you want a divorce. Now I'm going to share some suggestions that will make the expectations for the talk um, and how the talk goes more realistic and more manageable um, and hopefully less awkward and less painful. So here are some things that you should know or do or expect from the talk. Number one, you actually have to have the talk in person. Nobody wants to have a meeting or a discussion that creates conflict and some people might even hate being the bearer of bad news. But you can't bury your head in the sand either or do it at arm's length or by text or by phone call. Unless having a talk with your soon-to-be ex and telling him or her that you want a divorce might put you in danger. Other, if that's not the case, then you really need to have the talk in person. You can't just walk out one day with the intention of never returning and hope that your spouse figures it out or go out and hire a lawyer and file at the courts and your spouse will find out because they're served papers. You should have the talk with them and let them know before they find out from anyone else. Number two, as we say in real estate, location, location, location. Where you have the talk is very important for you to plan ahead of time. You might not know how your spouse is going to react and if there's a chance that he or she might become violent or just throw things or hurt you in some way, make sure that your location prohibits that. Another option for some people might be to have a friend or a relative or someone that knows nearby just in case. Don't just wait for some day without planning ahead of times where you might just Feel the courage after dinner, for example, with no plan whatsoever, and the kids might be home upstairs or in the basement. Another great idea is to have a cell phone in hand pre-programmed with 911. Don't keep waving the phone in their face or holding it and prompting them. It's not for them to know. It's more of a subtle thing, maybe the screen turned face down, just so that you know you're safe if anything escalates. But they don't have to know that. And if any of your friends or relatives or therapist or lawyer or anyone knows that you're going to have the talk, let them know when and where. Let them know it's today or tonight, if it's at home or where you're going to be, just so that they know. As for your kids, have them stay with a relative or friend at the time of the talk. Possibly even a sleepover if your spouse might need some time to process things. Number three, consider their feelings. This might be tough for many people. Um, especially if you felt that your spouse rarely or never considered your feelings or considered what you might want. Maybe that's even part of the reason why you want a divorce. But think about how you'd feel if the situation were reversed. If your spouse were to spring this type of news upon you without your expectation or your preparation. But be direct. Beating around the bush uh, about wanting a divorce won't make it any easier. And it won't make the news any less painful for you or your spouse either. But while being direct, try not to start blaming them for everything that they did wrong in your marriage. Even if they ask what they did wrong, and most people do, resist the temptation to start blaming. Don't use it as an opportunity to vent your frustrations and anger or point out every single one of their flaws. And please, if you have a new relationship on the go, or you're possibly beginning one with someone, this is not the time to mention it, or shall I say flaunt it, as some people might feel compelled to do. It's just going to complicate things. Just bring the focus back to the fact that you've considered your decision very carefully, at great length, not something you took lightly or spur of the moment, and you're confident that you're making the right decision, not just for you, but for everyone in your family. And calmly suggest that he or she stop trying to find blame or find fault and just focus on how and when to move forward. Number four, don't mislead them of your intentions. If your spouse doesn't immediately agree that a divorce is your only option, but you've made up your mind, then don't give, her, give him or her false hopes or expectations. If they're hopeful, um, but you know that there's a chance there's no chance that you're going to get back together. Similarly, if you know for sure there's no chance, if they suggest a trial separation or something like that just to see if it can help, 
don't agree just to ease the pain or get out of this awkward moment either. Be nice, but be direct and tell them you've passed the point of no return. Number five, allow for a reasonable amount of time to have the talk. If you consider the points that I've just shared with you, then you should realize that this won't be a wham-bam, thank you ma'am type of talk. You won't just walk in and say, we're done, I've made up my mind, didn't want you to hear it from someone else, see you later. Not only should you allow proper time for a calm discussion, but also don't do it 10 minutes before one of you has to go pick up the kids or go to a work appointment or something like that. Now, depending on your spouse, there's a small chance they can't face the music uh, or they can't face you at that point. And they might just need to get out for some fresh air or talk to someone or process, process their thoughts and feelings alone. That's okay if they need to leave and they need to do so. But they also might just want to have a calm conversation with you or uh, sit there, even if your mind is made up. They might feel more comfortable just being with you as they think it through, hear it from you, and take the time to process their thoughts and feelings. They might even be expecting the news or feel the same way that it's time for a divorce, but they just didn't know how to have the talk or maybe they were afraid to come to you first. You just never know. If your spouse tries to pick a fight, or becomes angry, or tensions escalate, don't join the fight or get defensive by responding with your own anger or your own justifications. You have a right to your feelings of anger or whatever you might be feeling, but during the talk isn't the time to voice it and allow tensions to escalate. Since you were prepared for the talk and your spouse likely wasn't, be prepared to take a pause or a break from the conversation if needed. Maybe you have to put the conversation on hold until both of you can resume calmly. Number eight, no kids, regardless of age. Kids should not be a part of any conversations that you and your soon-to-be ex have about the details of your divorce. Even if your children are late teens or young adults or in their 20s, just because they're not toddlers or pre-adolescents, they're still your children. They're still a product of both of you. And that means keeping your kids out of your divorce conversations all the time. Number nine, be prepared for anything. Earlier I spoke about the need to be physically safe. But for this point that I'm making, I'm talking about verbal attacks that might arise during your talk. Your soon-to-be ex might respond with anger or they might be sad. Or both. They might not agree with your decision and they might start arguing with you. And if they're a high conflict type of personality or insecure about themselves, they might even become defensive and start verbally attacking you or slinging all kinds of accusations at you. Or if they're insecure and lack confidence, they might start begging you to reconsider. You just never know. For that matter, like I said earlier, they might become suddenly quiet and want to leave or just sit and say nothing at all. As you're about to learn throughout your entire divorce, you can never control your spouse or how they respond to what you say and what you do. But while you can't control them, you can control your own response to them. You can mentally prepare beforehand for the different ways your soon-to-be ex might react. That way, you won't be as surprised and you'll be more ready to handle their reaction and your own reaction to their reaction. Number 10, practice makes perfect. This one might sound unusual or awkward for you to do, but the benefits to you will be tremendous. A perfect breakup or perfect divorce talk only happens in the movies. You know why? Because they're scripted and they're rehearsed. So you can practice your talk also, your divorce talk, whether it's with your BFF or your buddy or even a mirror if you have to. Even if you can't control or anticipate the response you're going to get because you don't know what it'll be, by you practicing, it'll be more natural for you when you actually say what you have to say to your spouse. It'll be more natural, more authentic, and it'll flow smoother. Number 11, stay out of the weeds. And by weeds, what I mean by that is the details that aren't necessary for the discussion at this point in time. In other words, there is such a thing as TMI during the talk. Perhaps you've been wanting and planning your divorce in your mind for quite some time. Perhaps you have an idea of what you want your new life to look like. 
But the purpose and focus of the divorce talk is to let your spouse know that you intend to get a divorce and basically lay the groundwork for future discussions about the how and the when. You should think about a time after that talk, uh, after you've both had time to process everything, where you can discuss about hopefully divorcing amicably and maybe mediating um, or whether or not you're going to need a lawyer and, and all of those kinds of details. You should set up a time later to talk about who's moving out when or how you want to divide the assets or custody and living arrangements. All of those things don't have to be determined during the divorce talk. In closing, I'm going to leave you with this. It's very rare and highly unlikely that you're at the point of divorce and no return and your spouse thinks everything is hunky-dory hunky and not expecting it. But even though your spouse might have sensed problems in the marriage, or even dealing with their own frustrations and dissatisfactions uh, with you or that differ from you, they might not have thought or expected or accepted that it's come to divorce. While you might be there or have been a few steps ahead of your spouse uh, in that regard, they might have denied it or been more optimistic than you and possibly thought or hoped that it could be saved. You have to do what's right and what's best for you and your kids. And if your marriage is an unhealthy place for you to raise your kids, then you made a very big and important decision. And for that, I congratulate you. Just remember to structure your divorce talk based on the assumption that your spouse might not be in the same place mentally and emotionally as you are. Please remember that m me and my team of divorce professionals and divorce specialists can answer all of your questions beforehand, during and after divorce regarding any aspect of your divorce. So just remember we're all specialists and there's never any obligation or pressure. So if you have any questions about this topic or any other in your divorce, just email me at mike at the divorceguy.ca and it's strictly confidential. And be sure to check out my friends over at divorcespecialistgroup.com. They really do have the best specialists in divorce and they have the best vetting process to find those specialists. And they have a free download on their website, a checklist that's really good. So I encourage you to get that. And please hit the thumbs up button right now before you forget so that this video can help others who are thinking about divorce. And now if you'd like a free hour, my treat with the city's best divorce coach, all you have to do is click on the red subscribe button and then just send me a quick message to let me know you did it. And don't worry, when you click on subscribe, it's confidential. And when you contact me, it's confidential. So no one else will know. And I'll cover a free hour for you to speak to the divorce coach. Thanks for watching.